It's a great day in sports analytics. I'm Victor Holman, sports analytics expert, and welcome to the Sports Analytics 3-Minute Drill, where I break down sports analytic methods and explain how they're being used today in the world of sports. Today we're going to discuss spatio-temporal trajectory clustering. We're going to discuss the English Premier League soccer transition research conducted by Jennifer Hobbs, Paul Power, Long Shaw, Hector Ruiz, and Patrick Lucy. So let's get started. Spatio-temporal trajectory clustering methods identify heterogeneous patterns and explore underlying mechanisms and are designed to consider both temporal and spatial information and in trajectories. Applying time-dependent shortest path distance measurement and taking advantage of topological relations of a predefined network, this algorithm can define the shared subpaths among trajectories and construct the clusters. In soccer, transitioning from defense to offense and vice versa is extremely important. However, there are no methods to quantify or rank the effectiveness of these transitions. In order to create a model to accomplish this, a playbook of the most commonly used plays was put together. Data was collected from 2016 to 2017 English Premier League. This data was then used to create a playbook of those plays that were commonly used by the various teams throughout the season. Analyzing this playbook generates information regarding which plays were the most effective and where players should position themselves on the field to be most effective. Spatiotemporal trajectory clustering models can also be used to determine which offensive plays lead to goal scoring opportunities. Plays can be measured and ranked based on their probability of a shot being taken. Counterattacks can also be evaluated. Reviewing the data for counterattacks demonstrates that more shots are created from counterattacks than any other plays. In fact, shots are not only more likely to occur directly following a counterattack, but also at any point in the possession resulting from the counterattack. The results also indicate that these shots are more likely to result in a goal than shots made at other times. Finally, the model also looks at how teams transition from offense to defense. It looks at the time required for a player to get into their correct position on the field during the transition period. Spatiotemporal trajectory clustering can be very valuable for analysts and teams. Those plays that rank high in the probability of leading to a shot can be analyzed from both an offensive and defensive point of view. Offensively, teams can determine how these plays can be utilized most effectively by their players. Defensively, Teams can work on how to best defend against these plays in order to minimize the chances of the opposing team scoring. As counterattacks have a greater probability of leading to a goal, these plays need to be analyzed carefully, again from both the offensive and defensive point of view. Teams can also look at the transitioning time period. Where are their own players located? How do they transition and how quickly are they able to do so? Is there a time of disorder on the field when players are out of position, giving the opposition a better chance of obtaining a shot? Teams can incorporate all of their findings into their own playbook and training regime in order to maximize their offensive chances and minimize their defensive losses. It also enables the team to work as a cohesive whole and gain a better understanding of what is most effective for the team as a whole. Analytic methods used in this research includes hierarchical clustering, machine learning techniques using supervised and unsupervised training. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like to learn about a groundbreaking approach for leveraging analytics to get players to execute team strategy, check out my Agile Sports Analytics framework, software, and mobile app. If you'd like to know how your team or sports organization can leverage analytics across the seven key maturity areas and 26 best practices, check out my sports analytics maturity model and take the free comprehensive sports analytics maturity assessment. To learn more about this and 150 different sports analytic methods, purchase my book, Sports Analytics from A to Z, available on Amazon.
And if you need help developing analytic models that create a competitive edge, contact me for a free consultation at www.agilesportsanalytics.com or call me at 888-861-8733.